Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about small bowel or cross sound reporting. You will learn how to write or cross sound reports regarding small bowel pathologies. The reports will include the findings and the impression. The reports will focus mainly on small bowel findings. We will start with our normal report. The indication is suspected small bowel obstruction. Here are the findings of small bowel. The loops of the small bowel are within normal limits. There are no signs of small bowel obstruction. Wall thickness of the examined small bowel loops is consistent throughout and measures within normal limits. Peristalsis is observed and appears normal. No signs of abnormal fluid collection or free fluid in the abdomen. These are other observations. The liver, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, kidneys and bladder were briefly evaluated and appeared grossly unremarkable. No masses or lymphadenopathy were identified. Here is the impression. Normal appearance of the small bowel without evidence of obstruction or wall thickening. No free fluid in the abdomen. No further ultrasound evaluation is required based on the sonographic findings. Clinical correlation is recommended. This is a case of enteritis. Clinical indications are clinical suspicion of enteritis based on symptoms of abdominal pain, diarrhea, and fever. These are the findings. Multiple loops of the small bowel demonstrate increased bowel thickness measuring up to 5 millimeters. The normal range is up to 3 millimeters. Bowel wall layers show stratification. Increased vascularity of the affected bowel loops is seen on color Doppler, indicating hyperemia. Peristalsis is diminished in the thickened segments. No evidence of obstruction or intersusception. Small amount of free fluid noted around the affected bowel loops. The rest of the scan was unremarkable. This is the impression. Sonographic findings consistent with enteritis, characterized by increased bowel wall thickness, hyperemia, and surrounding free fluid. No evidence of small bowel obstruction or other complicating features. Further clinical evaluation and possible laboratory workup to identify the underlying cause of the enteritis. Follow up imaging or referral to a gastroenterologist may be warranted based on clinical progression or lack of resolution. This is a report for small bowel obstruction. Indication Clinical symptoms suggestive of small bowel obstruction, including abdominal pain, vomiting, and inability to pass gas or stool. These are the findings in the small bowel. Multiple dilated small bowel loops identified with diameters exceeding 3 cm. The content within these dilated loops is primarily fluid with some evidence of intraluminal gas. There is a notable absence of peristalsis in the dilated segments referred to as static bowel loops. To and fro peristaltic movements were observed in certain loops suggesting a functional obstruction. 
the transition point was not definitively identified on this examination. Increased amounts of free fluid noted within the abdomen, especially between the dilated bowel loops. The rest of the scan was unremarkable. This is the impression. Sonographic findings highly suggestive of a small bowel obstruction characterized by dilated static bowel loops and the presence of ascites. The underlying cause of the obstruction, example adhesions, hernia or mass, was not identified on this examination. Urgent surgical consultation is advised. Complementary imaging such as a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis may be beneficial to further elucidate the cause and location of the obstruction. This is a report for intersusception. Indication is a three-year-old with intermittent abdominal pain, current jelly stools, and a palpable abdominal mass. These are the findings. There is a segment of the small bowel that demonstrates the classic target or donut sign on transverse view, consistent with intersusception. On the longitudinal view, the multi-layered appearance, often termed the sandwich sign, is evident, further supporting the diagnosis. The intersusception measures approximately 4 cm in length. No evidence of free fluid or bowel wall ischemia around the intersusception at the time of the study. No identifiable lead point such as a mass or polyp within the intersuscepted segment. No other abnormalities were found. This is the impression. Sonographic findings consistent with ileoileal small bowel intersusception. No identified lead point or signs of complications at the time of this examination. Immediate pediatric surgical consultation is advised. Depending on the clinical situation and duration of symptoms, an air or contrast enema may be considered for reduction or direct surgical intervention might be required. This is a report for midgut volvulus. Indication is a six month old with acute onset of bilious vomiting, irritability, and a distended abdomen. These are the findings. There is a swirling of the mesentery and the superior mesenteric vessels, known as the whirlpool sign, consistent with midgut volvulus. The superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein demonstrate an abnormal relationship with the superior mesenteric vein positioned to the right of the SMA. Dilated loops of bowel are seen proximal to the area of torsion, while downstream loops appear collapsed. Reduced bowel wall perfusion is observed in certain segments, raising concern for potential bowel ischemia. The rest of the study was normal. This is the impression. Sonographic findings consistent with midgut volvulus, signs suggestive of compromised bowel perfusion, which requires urgent attention. Immediate pediatric surgical consultation is imperative. This is a surgical emergency and prompt intervention is necessary to preserve bowel viability. 
Here is a report of Crohn's disease. Indication is chronic abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, and suspected Crohn's disease. These are the findings. Multiple non-contiguous segments of the small bowel demonstrate increased bowel thickness with some areas measuring up to 7 mm. Increased vascularity, hyperemia, is noted in these segments on color doctor examination. A few small bubble loops are adherent to each other, forming inflammatory masses. There is evidence of a creeping fat sign, where the mesenteric fat appears to wrap around the bubble loops. No abscess, fistula, or significant free fluid is identified in the examined abdomen. Mild mesenteric lymphadenopathy was observed with a few nodes measuring up to 1.5 cm in short axis. The other organs were normal. Here is the impression. Sonographic findings are consistent with Crohn's disease affecting multiple segments of the small bowel, inflammatory changes including wall thickening, hyperemia, and the presence of creeping fat support the diagnosis. No complications such as abscesses or fistulas identified at the time of this examination. Correlation with clinical and laboratory findings is recommended. Further evaluation with MR enterography or iliocolonoscopy may be beneficial for a comprehensive assessment of disease extent and activity. Consideration for gastroenterology consultation for medical management. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.